Hello everyone and welcome to Machine Learning, Robotics and Large Language Model Tutorials. In this tutorial we explain how DeepSeq R1 AI model and the Python programming language can be used to design PID controller parameters. DeepSeq R1 and Python are running on a local computer. For those of you who are not familiar with DeepSeq R1, here is a brief introduction. DeepSeq R1 is maybe one of the most powerful AI reasoning models whose performance is similar to the ChatGPT models. However, there is one catch and big difference which motivates us to use DeepSeq R1. Namely, DeepSeq R1 is released under the MIT license. This means that you can use DeepSeq R1 for commercial purposes. That is, you can integrate it in your application that you're developing and you can even sell that application. In this tutorial, we are running DeepSeq R1 model on a local computer in Python. That is, we have installed DeepSeq R1 locally. The local installation enables you to speed up the design process it enables you better privacy, then you have complete control of large language model behavior and you can easily integrate DeepSeq R1 with other software. Now, here are the prerequisites for following this tutorial. First of all, you need to install DeepSeq R1 on your system. For that purpose, I created a separate video tutorial explaining how to install DeepSeq R1 locally in Python and Windows. And here is the tutorial and I will provide a link to that tutorial in the description below. Secondly, I strongly suggest you to watch this tutorial over here that explains how to use the Python control systems library. That is, you need to know how to simulate the control systems in Python. In fact, you don't even need to watch this particular tutorial since I will provide a detailed explanations on how to do that. A link to this particular video tutorial will be provided in the description below this video. So let's immediately start with explanations. In this video tutorial, we consider the classical control system design problem. And for completeness, brevity and clarity of this video tutorial, let's briefly describe it. This graph shows a basic structure of the feedback control algorithm. Y is the output that we measure, R is the reference signal or the set point, C is the controller, P is the plant, and D is the disturbance that affects our system. The main goal of the controller is to make sure that the output of the system tracks the reference signal. And over here you can see a step response of the closed loop system. This is a typical step response where after some time, for example after 3 seconds, the system will settle and more or less the set point will be tracked. And here is a brief description of the classical control system design problem. Given a transfer function of the plant, that is given the model of the plant P of S, design a PID controller, that is design C of S, such that the closed loop system has a rise time smaller than x seconds where x is a parameter defined by the user and the overshoot smaller than y percents where y is the number selected by the user that is we would like to constrain two things on this response first of all the rise time that is the time it takes for the step response to go from 10 to 90% of the steady state value should be smaller than certain number. And another thing that we want to constrain is this overshoot over here. The overshoot should be less than a certain amount of the value in the steady state. By doing that, we make sure that the system doesn't go crazy, that is that it doesn't overshoot and at the same time it has a relatively fast response. In this video tutorial, we are going to consider this test case. Our plant will look like this. It will be a typical second order model. That is, it's going to have a transfer function, which will look like this. Immediately, you can see 
the natural and damp frequency and damping ratio from here and you can see that this system is not well damped and our problem goes like this design PID control parameters such that the closed loop system has an overshoot less than 20% and rise time less than one second and we are going to use DeepSeq R1 to solve this problem okay let's start first of all we need to create a Python code that will call DeepSeq and that will pose the question and here's the code again in order to use this code you need to install DeepSeq R1 on your system and again I created a video tutorial here's the video tutorial and its link will be provided in the description below so let's explain the code first of all we need to import OLAMA OLAMA is a framework and a Python API that's used to call large language models in our case we installed DeepSeq by using OLAMA and consequently we are calling OLAMA API to call DeepSeq here we need to specify the desired model in our case we are using a distilled version of DeepSeq that is we are using the model with 14b parameters and over here we specify the name of the model here to see what models are installed on your system you need to open a command prompt and in the command prompt you need to type olama list and over here you can see the model that I'm currently running and you need to copy and paste the name over here the next step is to ask a question and here is our question the question goes like this design a PID controller in the parallel form for the open loop plant given here that is you can just insert the plant the closed loop system should have a rise time less than one second and overshoot less than 20 percent and that's it you simply pose the question over here as a string then over here you call olama.chat that is you call the function that will call the model you specify the name of the model then you specify over here the structure that defines what are you trying to do your role is the user and the content is the question to ask and that's it then after that you need to extract the response namely this function will generate this data structure response to get the actual response you need to type the message then content and then over here I'm going to print the response on the screen then over here I'm going to save the response in this file the name of the file will be alputolama.txt here with open I'm opening this file I'm using with open mainly because I have to ensure that after I'm I wrote everything to the file the file will be automatically closed and saved properly and this is very important and then over here once we open the file we simply write the content and that's it simple as that okay now let's run the model to run this code press and hold Control shift p then search for python select interpreter click here then click on the python interpreter inside of the virtual environment and then click here and click on run python file and that's it now we are running the model now here it's always a good practice to open a task manager and to look into the computer resources over here you can see that i'm using gpu you can see the gpu usage over here and gpu memory consumption memory is almost half a little bit more than half in fact there is around 14 billion parameters currently in my gpu memory and you can see the GPU processor is working hard to compute the answer and over here you need to be patient in my case I'm running NVIDIA 3090 GPU and after approximately one minute the response is generated and here it is here I open the text file produced by the model so we can see what's written all right so I need to design PID controller in parallel form for this plant here is the plan the closed loop system should have a rise time less than one second and an overshoot less than 20 percent percent so over here the large language model is trying to summer summarize the task and then luckily and very good 
the large language model was able to recognize the parallel form and to write it down. And then here is the procedure. You can see what's happening over here. I'm not going to read everything over here. The general idea here is to relate the formulas and to use them that relate the time domain specification with the poles. Once you compute the poles of the system, then you can do pole placement or something similar to compute the PID control parameters. And you can see the complete procedure over here. You can see many attempts over here. There are different things being tried, pole placement, some matching, solving different types of equations, etc. Note over here that we are not calling behind the scene a Python tool. That is, we are not calling a Python script that will iteratively or by using reinforcement learning try to find the correct values of the parameters. Everything is based on a textbook knowledge. And if you go down, go down, go down, you can see the gains over here that are being computed. You can see the proportional gain, you can see the integral gain, and you can see the derivative gain. And of course, you can read <laughs> everything over here if you want to learn more what are the uh, different attempts and how to solve. This is also very good for studying control engineering. Okay, the next step is to verify these computations by simulating the closed loop response. Now, for that purpose, we are going to use control systems library in Python. Control Systems Library in Python is completely free and you can install it with a single line of code. And to help you to start with the Python Control System Library, I created this tutorial and I will provide a link to that tutorial in the description below. So let's go and let's write a code that will test the closed loop performance on the basis of the computed parameters. So here is the Python code. First of all, we import matplotlib then we import the control systems library. You can easily install, install control systems library by typing pip install control or something similar. Watch my video tutorial. Then we are importing numpy as np and this line over here actually is not necessary. So let me erase it. Over here I wrote a simple function that will plot the response. The input parameters are x-ax, axis vector, y-axis vectors. These are the vector defining the points that need to be plotted. Then I have a title of my graph. I have x-axis label, y-axis label, and I have this last string that's used to define the file name. Namely, I will save the graph as a PNG file. And over here, I'm defining the figure. I'm plotting the results. Then I'm setting the title, I'm setting the X label, I'm setting the Y label. Then I'm adjusting the ticks, that is, I'm adjusting the size, the label size. Then I'm plotting the grid, then I'm saving the figure. Note over here that I'm using 600 dots per inch and I'm showing the figure. And over here is an equivalent function. This function has a similar form to the first function, the only difference is that this function is will be will actually plot two graph at the, in the same plot it's very similar first of all i'm specifying for the first and the second graph x axis coordinates y axis coordinates for the first and second graph and the rest is the same over here i'm plotting the first and second graphs showing the plot and that's it and here comes the main part over here so here are the computer control parameters. So I simply went to the script. I copied proportional gain. Here it is. Then I copied integral gain. Here it is. Then I pro copied the derivative gain. Then over here, I'm defining s as a symbolic variable. For that, I'm using control systems library and tf function. Note over here that the syntax is very similar to MATLAB syntax. Then over here, I'm defining an open loop transfer function. Here it is, w, and I'm printing it out. And here is my controller that's parameterized by kp, ki, and kd. Note that this is a parallel form of the PID controller. And then over here, I'm computing the closed loop transfer function 
on the basis of this block diagram. Namely, if you know P, you know C, then you know that W is P multiplied by C divided by 1 plus PC. And that's exactly that. And then over here, I'm simulating the response. I'm simulating, first of all, the closed loop response. To do that, I need to call the function ct.stepResponse. I need to specify the transfer function and the time vector. Then I do the same thing for the open loop system. That is, I'm just specifying my open loop transfer function. And once I call these two functions, these two time series will be generated and they, rep they represent the step response of the closed loop system and the step response of the open loop system. And then I generate three graphs. First of all, I'm calling the plotting function, the first version, to get the closed loop response. And you can see everything over here, what's being provided. Then I'm doing the same thing for the open loop for comparison. And then finally, on the same graph, I'm plotting both open and closed loops responses. And you can see it over here, how it looks. Okay, so let's save this file. Let's now press and hold Control Shift P. Then let's search Python, select the interpreter over here. Let's select the interpreter, then click here and bang, it starts. Now what will happen? The response will be computed and that's it. Okay, beautiful. Over here, you can see the step response of the closed loop system. Let's verify the design specifications. Obviously, the rise time is super small. It's maybe 0.1 second. Overshoot is also very small. It's maybe less than even 10%, which is very important. That is, we have met the specification and DeepSeek R1 was able to design the control system. Here, for comparison, you will see the open loop response, you see how the open loop system has a huge overshoot. And then finally, you can see the effect of control. You can see how our system is being nicely, 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 not only stabilized, it was stable, but we have achieved the desired specs. You can see how beautiful the response looks like of the closed loop system, the blue line over here. And this proves that DeepSeek R1 can be used to design control systems. So the message is, should you study control theory or not? Well, if you just follow an AI approach, you don't need to study, right? However, you still need to know how to simulate a closed loop system, right? You still have to know some basics. However, be careful. Nothing can replace a human being. And control theory is a very deep subject. There's so many issues over here if you want to apply this algorithm in practice. There are nonlinearities, saturations, there are a bunch of model uncertainties, and this is just the first step. Okay, that's all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I'm creating, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Also on my YouTube channel, you have more than 900 free video tutorials covering different topics. I have a lot of tutorials on robot operating system, control engineering, machine learning, etc. That's all for today and see you in the next video.